What's up guys, welcome to Supercars in London and a video I wasn't expecting to film. However, last weekend was my birthday weekend where I celebrated with a little weekend away with my girlfriend in the Cotswolds. And luckily, Velocity Cars were able to offer me this bad boy, a 2015 AMG A45 Mercedes-Benz. Not the right order of how you're supposed to say the car. But anyway, Velocity Cars are a company that have an amazing fleet of AMG cars. You can check them out on all of the links in the description below. Anyway, they were kind enough to allow me to borrow their brand new A45 AMG. And um, I have to say that I'm a huge fan of this car before I sat in the driver's seat. I'll tell you a little story about why I love the Mercedes A-Class so much when we jump inside and go for a little drive. But this video is more about a discussion about what I felt about this car when I took it for the weekend up in the Cotswolds. I kind of regret not filming because there were some amazing roads, so many cool country lanes, twists, turns, straights, and I could really put the power down in this car thanks to its four-wheel drive. So let's jump inside, talk to you about what you get from this car as an engine, as an interior, but also as a whole package of a hot hatch and what it is like compared to the Audi RS3 which I drove halfway through last year. So let's jump in, check out what this car is all about. So when you sit in the driver's seat of the 2015 Mercedes A45 AMG, you are greeted with quite a lot of stuff in front of you. You've got buttons everywhere. It's actually really quite well designed. I have to say, I do love the way Mercedes designed their interiors. Yes, there is a lot of buttons. Mercedes are definitely not one of those companies that say simplicity is better. As you start over here, we've got all the electric buttons for the passenger seat. I've also got it my side as well. We've got the doors, we've got the mirrors here. And then as you work your way across this beautifully designed steering wheel, I absolutely love gripping this. I much prefer for a, a thick steering wheel as opposed to a thin one. My Audi A1 is quite thin, but this is quite thick and has got some very, very similar similarities to the AMG GTS steering wheel. Um, it's also got some lovely Alcantara bits here, which are actually probably the best place for your hands to be, right by the gear levers, whereas in the Audi RS3, they decide to do the Alcantara bits here, and down here, so your hands are on the leather, but then everything else up here is Alcantara, which I actually love feeling the Alcantara and would love to have a car that has an Alcantara steering wheel. How you start this car up, this car is actually fitted with keyless go. So you put your foot on the brake like so, and there is the start button around here. And we press this and the engine comes to life with an awesome start up. Oh, it even cracked on the startup. And here we go. So this is the satellite navigation. Just taking a little while to get set up. But it is very, 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 very sporty. Let's set the radio down quickly. Quick, 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 quick. So I tend to listen to the radio. Down here we've got the gear select lever here with the um, AMG logo here. We've got the drive selector. We've got individual. The reflection is quite bad. Individual, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. And every time it comes up with cool little features about how this car is set to drive. And you, on individual mode, you can basically set this car up however you want. You can have everything as sporty as possible with the traction controller, which is ideal because otherwise you'll just end up in a bush somewhere. Even though this car is four-wheel drive, it is a bit of an animal. So to begin with, I'm just gonna leave it in comfort mode and we can start cruising, talking about what this car is like to drive. It's very easy and very similar to the majority of automatic cars that I've driven. You move the drive select into D, which is drive, take your foot off the brake and the car lurches forward. As simple as that, take your foot off the brake. And I mean, cars are so easy to drive. Back when I did my driving test, as if it was 30 years ago, it wasn't, it was about eight years ago, and it was a manual gearbox, isn't it? Oh, I was just about finding the biting point, and I mean, my R8 was manual, but for some reason, the way that cars are built now, it is so easy, and I suppose lazy, and that might be, and I prefer it, <laughs> not because I'm lazy, but I think uh, this PlayStation generation where, driving cars on games and it's all done for you and it's all automatic it is being implemented on all of these new cars and something like a hot hatch which is built for the city but at the same time has enough power to get you wherever you want to be as quick as you need to get there 
it's just it's just an awesome awesome little package that you can get in this car and i absolutely love the mercedes don't get me wrong i love the mercedes brand i do think some of their newer cars are a little bit too curvy when i first saw the amg gts as well i thought that was a little bit too curvy but i was definitely more lamborghini it was all about straight lines and angles and sharp points um, but i'm coming around to the mercedes amg gts i have got a real soft spot for the A-Class, the new Mercedes A-Class. If you remember back potentially 2004, 2005, when Mercedes were bringing out this god-awful A-Class, really high, and it just looked, it didn't look very sporty, it was a family car, and Mercedes decided that they wanted to move the A-Class to a B-Class, which then left a gap to try and target the younger audience, which brought this, the Mercedes A-Class hatchback. The new Mercedes A-Class that came out, it was aimed at the younger generation, and it captivated me. Back when I was looking at my first car, um, I actually placed an order for a brand new Mercedes A-Class. It was a 180. Um, it was the cheapest model, but I just loved it. I loved the interior. I thought that it was really classy. And for what you, for what you got for your money, it was a really, really cool car. And unfortunately, I had to cancel the order because it got delayed. And then I went and bought my 2007 Voxel Astra SXI. So I've got a bit of a ongoing relationship with the Mercedes A-Class. So actually getting behind this car, it seems relatively familiar, but there's still lots and lots of exploring to do, which I've thoroughly enjoyed over the last few days driving into the Cotswolds. I've definitely played around with Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus. I haven't touched the individual setting because, because this isn't my car, I don't want to set the car up to my individual taste because I'm sure the individual setting has already been set up for Velocity cars. But just cruising around, there's no real need to touch the brake pedals on these sorts of corners, these flowing bends, I can just keep my foot on the accelerator. The car's grip is incredible. Even though it's awful outside, rainy, the car's grip is amazing. And cruising around in comfort mode, which we aren't gonna be doing for too much longer in this video, the gear shifts are seamless. I've just accelerated there and haven't felt a single gear shift. All you can really hear is the engine note, and the engine note is actually really prominent in this car. And even though we are in comfort mode, we do have quite a lot of road noise, and that varies depending on what the tarmac is like. And I've driven on some pretty awful roads this weekend, and it just is really, really quite intrusive. Um, the suspension isn't that bad. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. I think the way that this car looks, from an exterior perspective, you kind of expect it to be a real race car for the road, like the sort of touring car stuff that you see around Brands Hatch. And it's actually really quite enjoyable to drive and it doesn't sort of break your back, it doesn't hurt. The seats, even though these are the sports seats, are really, really comfortable. I was also worried not only at the suspension hardness, but also at whether the seats were comfortable or not, because these are the sporty bucket seats that you can get from this, uh, from the AMG range. But they're very good, so that's good. What I'm gonna do now, is put it not into sport because I think that's completely pointless and put it into sport plus now I have no idea what that does it's telling me that it's got a D ESP is still on and the engine mode is now in sport plus I don't really understand why there is a sport mode I haven't explored that because I think based on the cars that I've previously driven that you that you either need it on or off and comfort is off and on is Sport Plus. I don't particularly feel the need for a middle ground between on or off. So what do you get when you're in Sport Plus? So the suspension firms up, everything becomes a lot more responsive from the throttle, the steering becomes a lot heavier, which is very, very nice, weighted into the corners, and you do get a really, really good feel for the car. Even though it's four wheel drive, there isn't actually that much understeer that I'm able to experience on public roads. So that, I suppose, is a good thing. If you take it to a track, it might be a completely different story, but Velocity Cars will probably be able to help answer that question as to whether it is understeery. Um, but then as soon as I start playing with the paddles, it goes down to three, 
goes down to two, you get some lovely crackles. One thing that happens with Sport Plus is the exhaust valves, the Sport exhaust is activated at all times. So you get that bit of anti-social crackle, you get a fantastic mid-gear change blurb. Like that, which is awesome. And it pretty much happens every single time. Mercedes have engineered that into the exhaust system. They just dump a little bit of fuel out the back so that it cro crocs and crackles. Pops and crackles. Didn't do it that time. That's the first time. I think it's probably because it touched the brakes soon after. But it's got some lovely crackles on the overrun. Ooh, ooh. It is quite an antisocial car when you want it to be. But as you can see, like, it is so much fun to drive. And the great thing with this car is it is manageable power. I love using that word because in a car like this, the size of this, you don't want any more power than you've already got. And I just love putting it into corners because it just eats them up. It is thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. For me, I love the hot hatch package. I love the size of it. I love the amount of power that you can get. And I know that there are other rivals than this and the RS3, the likes of the BMW 135 and also the Golf R, but I haven't driven those cars, so I can't really relay experience or a comparison to those cars. I have, however, driven the RS3, and to be fair, I drove it pretty hard because I was on the press drive and we had a hill climb all to ourselves, but one thing, with the valves open, this car does not shut up. So whilst I'm driving this car in Sport Plus, <laughs> Let's start a quick discussion about the price point of the hot hatches and especially the Mercedes and the RS3. The RS3 with options comes out around the late 40s, early 50s, which is exactly the same as this car. So new, they're pretty much exactly the same price, £50,000, which sounds like a lot of money for a hatchback. But let's start ticking off some of the things that you get in this car and then see whether it works out to be worth it. So what do you get for £50,000? Well, you get a whole load of brand new technology. In this car, there's all sorts of stuff that I haven't even been able to explore, but you get all of the lights of the Bluetooth, the cruise control, the parking sensors, the HD reversing camera, which I've never seen before. Inside, it is an awesome place to sit. Very comfortable and very, very easy to drive. So as a driver or even as a passenger, you get a lot of kit. Not only that, there's so much space in the back. I'm gonna actually put it in comfort because the gear changes are stretched out in Sport Plus. You get so much room in the back. It's not like any of these two plus twos. The Nissan GTR, which technically could potentially be in the same price point if you've got 50,000 pounds to spend. You get actual room, leg room in the back of this car. So if you wanna ferry three of your mates around, easy it's about as big as a bloody range rover in the back you've got over 300 brake horsepower at your right foot 335 if i'm correct in this car more than enough power at any given time on any given road if i just want to make it make a little acceleration here that's in comfort mode but it's, it is so quick and because it's in such a small shell it feels really quick and it is just, it's awesome. With the four wheel drive as well, like here, it's almost like a chicane. And I can just come in, take the corner, and I'll do it again. I'll do it again, and it is thoroughly enjoyable. We've got a bit of a camber on this one. <laughs> you get so much for your money. And I know that there are cheaper options, potentially even a used A45 or a used RS3, but brand new I'm talking about. Um, what does it compare to potentially in the used market if you're thinking about a super sports car or even a supercar? I reckon 50 grand will get you a pretty decent example Nissan GTR R35, the supercar slayer as everyone knows it. You could also get a pretty good example of an early manual V8 R8, one that I own, fantastic car, really really cool, but two seats. 
not as practical as this. This has actually got a really big boot as well. So if you want to go on a road trip with four of your mates, you can all bundle in this car. It actually does good for you as well. 45, 50 quid to fill up, a 50 litre tank, and you will definitely get between 400 to 450 miles on it on a long motorway cruise. As a practical family car, I could probably get away with saying that this is a family car. As a practical family car that you could also take for a hoon yourself. These, these cars are unbeatable. The Audi RS3 and the Mercedes are unbeatable. So I think I'm gonna leave the sort of final drive with this. I think, given the option, if I was to own a daily, a Nissan GTR or an Audi R8 versus an A45 AMG or an Audi RS3, I'd pick the hot hatch. Please don't hate me. <laughs> but if it was the only car that you had to own and you had to daily it, I think I would. And I think over both of these cars, as fantastic as this is, I think the exterior is a little bit leery. The RS3, slightly more understated. And I just feel the interior, slightly classy. And everyone knows that Audi's interior is, is up there with the best. I think I would have an RS3. Fantastic car as this is, and you can definitely pick up a bargain second hand, or even if you just want to drive this from Velocity Cars, they are an absolute hoon and a load of fun. So, yeah, I think that's the best way to summarize what hot hatches are for me. It's my opinion, I love them, and I would love to one day upgrade the new, take it to the gym and have it all blacked out out the RS3 because I do think they're fantastic, and both this and the RS3 with sports exhaust, they just sound amazing. And the crackles that are engineered into the car are incredible. So I think, and I hope that I've done this car justice, and hopefully, I think there's gonna be better people out there to uh, be able to give a more well-rounded review of this car, but for the weekend that I've had, that is what I've learned, that is my outcome, and that is sort of my opinion on what the 2015 Mercedes-Benz A45 AMG is. <laughs> right, hold it there, hold it there. I might jump out and get some shots of it.